One of the industries to experience a COVID boom has been telehealth. To take us through some global companies, uh, or three global companies for opportunity in that space is Felicity Thomas from Shore and Partners. And she joins us here live. Felicity, pleasure to have you on the show at the desk with us. Thanks Good for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Telehealth. I've certainly taken advantage of telehealth uh, <laughs> this year. As have I. <laughs> I wonder. I did, I did this morning. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, well, talk us through what's going yeah. on with, with telehealth and, and the theme here, because this is something that is likely to stick around post COVID. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think, think about it when you go to the doctor, right? You're usually waiting an extra 30 minutes just to see someone. Mm. You know, you waste a lot of time. With telehealth, you know, it's really allowing access to many people all over Australia, all over the globe, mm. um, without the long time frames. Let's, um, let's go and have a look around the uh, different regions. So in the United States, uh, what's your preferred pick and why? Yeah, so my pick is Teladoc, which is a stock that probably a lot of people have heard of already. Mm. I don't know if you've heard of it before. Mm. Um, but basically, they're a global leader in virtual healthcare um, using video conference, um, phone, internet, video. Um, they also look after not just illnesses, but prescriptions as well. Um, it's 16 billion USD market cap. Mm. Um, it listed in 2015 for $20. It's around $200 US at the moment. Um, and that's probably my favorite pick. 175 different countries. I'm not sure if you've heard of Best Doctors Australia, um, but they use a powered by Teladoc as well. Right, and and um, there's also Ping, a good doctor. Can you talk us through this one? It's um, yeah, yeah. an Asia exposed stock. Yeah, so on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So if investors are, um, I guess, confident enough to invest in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, I would definitely recommend Ping and Good Doctor. Uh, so the code is 1833. Now, essentially, um, think about it like this. The U the Chinese population is four times bigger than the US population. So Chinese healthcare and telehealth is going to be a serious growth area. Mm. Um, I think, you know, there are a lot of movies um, back in the day and a lot of Chinese people in mainland China didn't have access to a family doctor or ongoing support. And Ping An Good Doctor is really allowing that for those people. What about locally? Are there any uh, names out there that you can actually go and, uh, and look at to go and have a familiar story here in Australia? Um, look, none that I follow closely. The only Australian stock which is very similar, um, which is in uh, virtual diagnostics of breast cancer, is Volpara Health Technologies. The code is VHT. Um, that's, you know, breast density scanning mm. virtually, which I think is very important. And they actually do it all over Australia, all over the globe as well. When you say virtually, so that you can do that via a telehealth. Yeah, and they send the diagnostic back to um, the mainland and then they, um, you know, go through all of the different x-rays because the different radiologists essentially have different training. Right. They're trying to, I guess, streamline training so that things aren't actually missed um, in scanning. So, so it's actually improved. Um, you know, breast cancer diagnosis by 35%. Can I ask you, in terms of valuation, yep. I mean, obviously this has been a huge, there's been tailwinds because of COVID. Yep. Have you seen them run up quite significantly and do you see more value in these stocks going forward? Definitely. And look, they definitely have run up. Mm. Um, but I think all it did is it really just brought forward the need for telehealth. Yeah. Um, you know, before Teladoc, for example, um, you couldn't really get telehealth in Australia unless you're more than 15 kilometres away from mm. a main city or doctor. Um, you know, for example, let's take Teladoc, right? Valuation is $200 at the moment. Mm -hmm. We've got a price target of $265 US. Uh, bullish is 300 US. So even if it just goes to consensus price target, that's about 36% yeah, right. upside uh, just for 12 months. What about doctors? No, so the doctors who actually going to use the service, I can see that from a patient perspective that uh, there's so many advantages to not have to go wait around in the, uh, the, the waiting rooms, not be exposed to people who are sick as yeah, well. Yeah. But uh, what about doctors? Because the one thing I always struck with is that, you no, know, the duty of care means that they've got to go and do the best they possibly can by the patient. Mm -hmm. In a virtual environment, is it possible? Have you seen any concern raised by any, uh, any particular doctors groups about uh, no, using this, uh, this new technology? Uh, no, I honestly haven't seen any issues. The thing is, they'll be actually able to see more patients, mm. help more people. So I actually think it's a good thing. Um, you know, I'm sure some doctors don't like it, mm. but I mean, we need to look at moving forward and the way of the future is really telehealth. Yeah, and it would be used in conjunction, obviously, with face-to-face, -face, I guess, given, you know, depending yeah. on, on what sort of ailment you are, are I mean, requiring. If it's serious, you obviously still need to go to the, do um, mm. the hospital. Um, you know, it's not going to take away that. Is there a thought, though, because, I mean, there's a little talk that telehealth could be limited, may not continue you know beyond COVID I mean there's obviously in different jurisdictions there's different help and assistance from Medicare or you know how much yeah. you get back from from um, 
you know, in, into your account after after a session. Is this the same globally? I mean, are we seeing the same sort of? Um... I think the world has changed. So post COVID world, you know, it's not like we're going to click our fingers, get a vaccine, and everything's going to be back to normal. Mm. I mean, we're going to have to learn to live with this yep. for the next two, three, five years. The vaccine doesn't necessarily stop you from getting COVID either. For example, the flu. Mm. People still get the flu, right? Mm. It's still ongoing. So it's an ongoing issue. So I think ongoing telehealth is going to be the way of the future. Mm. Felicity Thomas from Sharon Partners, fantastic to go. Now, have you in the studio today? Great. Thank Cheers. you for having me. All right. Bye. All right.